The OAT is a difficult exam, and although you can take it multiple times, I don't want you to have to spend more time, spend more money, and spend more headspace worrying about doing well on it more than once. So how can you pass the OAT on your first try? Well, in this video, I'll break down some study techniques and habits that you can develop to make sure that you only have to take the OAT once to get into your dream optometry school. So what is passing the OAT? Well, for me, of course, passing the OAT is getting a good enough score that'll get you into the school you want to go to. So some schools that may be like higher than a 300, might be a 310, 320, 330, depending on how competitive you'd like to be as an applicant. Some schools will accept you if you have a 290, 280, 270, and I've even seen 260. And so when you take the OAT, just make sure you study up and prepare to get the score that you will need to pass the OAT. But for all intents and purposes of this video, we're considering a 300 to be passing. 300 is about what most schools are aiming for for you to have on the OAT. So study tip number one is I want you to make the exam experience as familiar as you can. Now there's a few ways you can do this. The first way I wanna make sure you make it familiar is studying somewhere that's quiet and peaceful and not busy. Whether you need to get out of your house and go to a public library or the library at your college, just somewhere where you can be quiet. Studying with music sometimes can help, but when you're studying or at least taking practice exams, I want you to do them in areas that are like the exam center, the Prometric Center, and that means somewhere quiet without disturbances. Now the next part of that is I need you to be taking full length practice exams. Now you can find practice exams online for free or purchase them through a course, but what I need you to do is I need you to take at least a few, meaning like two or three, at least full length practice exams, practicing like you're taking it right now. They I want this exam experience to feel so familiar to you that it's not gonna be as stressful on the day of. So take those practice exams full length with the breaks and the lunches and the uninterruptedness of it to familiarize yourself with everything. Now, the last thing that I want you to do is I want you to visit the place you're going to take it beforehand. How Prometric works is it's like, you know, a study computer lab kind of thing with cubicles and cameras watching you and then there's like a security checkpoint that lets you in, and then there's like a front desk waiting area with like lockers and stuff. And each exam center is gonna be a little bit different and you might not know exactly where it's at, but to relieve all the stress, go to it a week before, two weeks before, wherever, and just walk in. Um, you, there's a welcome desk there. You don't, need, you don't need permission to be in there. You just walk in, say, oh, hey, I scheduled it for this date. Are we still good? Blah, blah, blah. You don't have to talk to anyone. But I want you to just familiarize yourself with the experience as much as you can. And personally, I tried to do as many of these things, but I was still freaked out. So this is one of the areas that I wish I would have prepared better in, in familiarizing myself with everything. I only took one full length practice exam. I didn't go into the facility. I drove there, but I didn't go in. And honestly, I just wish that I could have taken some stress off because I did not sleep the night before. And now that you're familiar with how the exam experience is going to be, the next thing I need you to do to pass the OAT is study practice exams. Now, in the one before, I want you to take the full length practice exams. But for this one, I want you to study practice exams. So what this is, is once you've taken it, I need you to go back through it and really study it. Because the information in the OAT is not always the hardest, but the way that they ask things and the way that they present it can throw you for a loop and can be some of the hardest stuff that'll throw off your groove. And I do not want that for you the day of. So I want you to go through looking for patterns. Go through looking for how they ask something, not just what they ask. And once you get through a bunch of them, you'll start to pick up on some patterns and the test experience will go a lot better for you. Now, with that being said, you could do three or four of them, like the ones that you took full length, but to pass it on the first try, I need you to do a little bit more than that. 
And that's where study courses or study materials would come in handy, especially if you want to pass it on the first try. If you're okay retaking it, maybe you can try your luck at it without a course or without a book, but your first try, definitely worth the investment to get a study resource with practice exams that you can study. Little tips on how they ask things. In the quantitative reasoning section and physics, and to a lesser extent like chemistry and organic chemistry, they're asking questions with numbers and with words in them. So if English is your second language, or if you're not really good at reading into problems or like sorting out the information in your head, it's really beneficial to go through and boil down these word problems into just the numbers to be able to know what to do with them. And another reason why this is super helpful is the reading comprehension exam. It really depends. You probably see your score go up and down depending on what story you got. And going through the practice exams and seeing where they're asking questions about what part and kind of studying that will help a lot in helping you read better the first time on your reading comprehension. And also with biology, you'll kind of see that it's not really what they ask that's important, it's how they ask it. And you can narrow your answer down a lot of times by just reading the question and not knowing anything. So please don't just take practice exams, but study the practice exams. All right, so that's a lot of the hard content. But the number three important thing I want you to do to pass it your first time is add some human interaction to your study. A lot of times, people who do really bad on their first attempt think they're good at it without knowing that they're good, if that makes sense. Like, you, in your mind and on the computer when you're studying, looking through the problems, you can psych yourself up. You can be like, oh yeah, I've got this. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, that, that chemistry problem, yeah, that was easy. But if you were to try to explain it to someone or have someone check your understanding in a different way than the problems asking it, you might find that it's not going too well. So if you add some human interaction in there, you can be able to solidify your understanding on a lot of different topics. And that's super beneficial, especially if you wanna pass your first time. Now, how do you do this? Well, the obvious answer could be like a study group. I personally had a few people who were my coworkers at the optometry's office and we took the OAT around the same time. And so we had a study group, but you might not have that resource. And so you could also do Zoom call study groups. I know I can't personally coach everyone. If you want to be coached by me, you can go to my Patreon. But what you can do is down in the comments of my YouTube video or on the pre-optometry Reddit or some of the Facebook groups that you can join, Get some students together who want to have some human interaction and you can organize little study group Zoom calls that you can do just to check some understanding. And then to a lesser extent, but still good, is some of those study courses that you can buy have some mentors and have some like breakout sessions that have some human interaction to them as well. And so if you're using a course, Kaplan, Crack the OAT, Oak Booster, those kind of courses, might have some human interaction built into them, which is a good thing as well. Now, the very last and fourth thing that I want you to do to pass the OAT on your first try is give yourself time to study. Now, it's hard to say this because a lot of times either we make a study plan and don't stick to it or our ideal study plan is out of the framework that we give ourselves. And so what I would recommend is give yourself at least six weeks of consistent study. Now you could do efficient study in less than that. Six weeks will give you at least one week each section to go really hard and spend your time in there. Now studying the practice exams and everything can make everything a little complicated with that. So you can definitely, you know, I'd recommend you do way longer than six weeks, but if you want to pass on your first try, Give yourself at least six weeks of consistent study every day or mostly every day. And you're never going to stick perfectly to a plan, no matter how beautiful the plan or even the study course plan that you're trying to follow. No one's ever gonna follow those perfectly. And so give yourself some grace, give yourself some time. The more time, the better to study for the OAT. So that way you don't have to stress yourself out. 
You're gonna be stressed anyway. Don't be stressed because you didn't study all the material. Thank you so much and hopefully you can pass the OAT on your first try. If you want some optometry coaching, you can check the link in the description. And if not, still like the video if this was helpful to you. Subscribe if you want more similar videos like this one and comment down below to help me know how I can better help you. And we'll see you in the next video.